Well, it took longer than expected, but here is our review of The Turret by Razer. Welcome to It Came From A Box, I'm Sergio I.M. And last time we unboxed the turret, and since then I've been testing it out and I've learned a lot about this very capable peripheral. Peripheral. So you waited long enough, let's get to the review. Let's start off with what's in the box. First up, the mouse. And inside it, we have the rechargeable battery as well as the USB dongle. Then of course we have the lapboard or slash keyboard slash mouse mat. Then the charging dock for both devices, the power cable for that dock, and then the power adapter for that cable. Then we also have an extension dock for that USB dongle. And finally, paperwork and stickers. So quite a lot in this box. The turret is compatible with Windows and Mac, but it's pretty much just plug and play. So with that in mind, this should function on anything that accepts a keyboard and mouse input. I've tested it on Mac and Windows, as well as Google's Nexus Player and the Steam Link. As for consoles, the keyboard is picked up on the Xbox One, but not the mouse. And for PS4, it's the opposite with the mouse connecting, but not the keyboard. So it's not very functional for consoles. On Razer's support page, they have this handy compatibility chart, which I'm surprised they don't have on the product's main page. So check that out and it should help answer a few of your questions pertaining to compatibility. You can also use Razer Synapse to customize both the keyboard and mouse, as well as check the battery level. A few of you guys did state that there were issues with the software on Mac, so I installed it on a MacBook, and when I plugged in the turret, it was never detected by Synapse. But the keyboard and mouse did work, so I'm not sure what that's all about. If you're a Mac user, keep that in mind. And if you know more about this, please let me know in the comments. And of course I have dimensions for you guys. Starting with the lap board, when it's open, it has a length of about 20 inches with a width of 4.72 and a height of just under half an inch at 0.47. When closed, the length drops down to 11.60 inches. Now for weight, it comes in at 1.54 pounds. Moving over to the mouse, its length is 3.86 inches with a width of 2.64 inches and a height of 1.38 inches. I did mention it was very light and it weighs way less than a pound at 0.20 to be exact. Being that this is a wireless device, one of the most important features will be how strong the connection is because if it lags, you're dead in the water. So the turret connects to your devices via the USB dongle or Bluetooth LE, which stands for low energy. Both of these methods use the same 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency, which has proven itself to be very solid. To me, it feels just the same way as being wired because I honestly couldn't tell the difference. Now I do wanna bring up that in some reviews out there, uh, users have stated that they've experienced some lag or delay with Bluetooth, although I personally cannot say the same. To the left side of the keyboard, we have a power button, and below that, a slider for Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz RF mode. I'm just gonna call it RF from now on. Pretty much the same thing goes for the mouse, a slider, but three settings. The top, Bluetooth, the bottom, RF mode, and to turn it off, you just move it to the middle. Both devices also have notification LEDs. The keyboard is located right above the escape key, and for the mouse, it's right under the scroll wheel in this little gap right here. These are used to indicate whether you're in 2.4 gigahertz RF mode, Bluetooth, and Bluetooth pairing mode, as well as battery life. As for distance, the range is great. I didn't use the provided extender, and I just plugged it in the back of my devices and was able to access it all the way down to the hallway, so great range for practical uses. I'm not sure if you can use it a mile away outside of your house or anything like that. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can. So on to battery life. Razer states the turret can last up to four months or 40 hours of continuous use. The longest I've gone without charging it has been about five days with roughly three to five hours of use per day. And even then I was never near low battery. It also has a sleep mode, which kicks in after 15 minutes of remaining idle, which I'm sure will save you a ton of hours on battery life if you're as forgetful as I am. Now, when you need to charge, you just attach the lap board and the mouse to the charging dock. 
I really love how this looks. Not only does the dock help prevent clutter by keeping it out of the way, but the sleek lines and thin profile makes for an interesting showpiece to have in your living room. Only issue I have here is that say you end up running low on battery while using it, that means you need to stop, attach it to the dock, and let it charge. I wish they added a small charging port of some kind which would allow you to charge while using it because then that wouldn't really be a problem. Onto the keyboard. I love typing on this thing. The build quality is fantastic. We have scissor switches in there and they're very responsive and they have a, a very tactile feel to them. Since they are chiclet style and thin, that makes the actuation point easy to access and when you're finished pressing a key, you can definitely feel it resetting right after with a good amount of force. And just like Razer's other keyboards, this one also features full anti-ghosting, which means you can press up to 10 keys simultaneously and each will register. To the right of the spacebar, we have two Android specific buttons, and that is back and home. These complement Razer's Forge TV, but I did get it to work on Google's Nexus player, so I'm sure other Android devices will work with it as well. As for function keys, we have volume keys on F1 to F3 and media keys on F5 to F7. But you'll notice that we don't have a macro record function or gaming mode on this keyboard. But gaming mode can be accessed through Razer Synapse software. Now, I know some of you are into that weird kinky stuff, so of course I'll let you listen to me using it. Very silent, I have to say, this ranks as one of the quietest keyboards I've ever used. Just like Razer's recently updated keyboards, each key now has that new font, which I'm a big fan of. It's very sharp, clean, easy to read, and it just looks good. The font is in Razer's bright green, but that doesn't help in the dark because by now, you may have noticed that there's no backlighting. Personally, when I play on a television in the living room or bedroom, it's always dark because that's how I like it. You can reduce reflections, or you can focus on just one spot. That led me to flipping the keyboard towards the light of the TV just to see where that specific function key was. That may not be that big of a deal if you're used to the keyboard layout, but to me, it's just a missed opportunity here, and I'm sure it'll turn some people away. The top of the lap board has a nice matte plastique which is yet to pick up any noticeable oils in my fingertips. But on the side, we have a shiny reflective plastic, which does pick up everything. Not that big of an issue, very easy to clean, smooth plastic, I guess, right? Let's move on to the mouse surface. If you've ever used a hard mat before, this is pretty much the same, but there's no texture to it at all. It's very smooth, which I was worried about at first because texture is important to help with that control and precision. Well, that's actually provided by the plastic texture underneath the mouse. It's very strange because at first, I thought it was the same type of rubber underneath the keyboard, which doesn't glide at all, but it's not. You'll notice these tiny little grooves on it, which allows it to grip to the surface, but as soon as you move it, it easily glides along with your hand, and it works really well. And this is actually a magnetic mouse mat, which attracts the magnets on the mouse and keeps it from sliding around, especially when the lap board is tilted to a certain degree on your lap. Really cool little feature there. For those of you wondering, yes, you can use it when it's folded closed like this, but I don't think it was designed to. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not. It works well on your lap, but on a flat surface, the issue is that the mouse mat is very smooth and actually glides, so when you type, it tends to move around on you. And finally on the back, we have rubber throughout the entire thing. This is great because when it's on your lap, it won't budge or slide around. And same if you use it on a desk. This mouse is very, very light, and I'm one of those people who likes a bit of weight to their mouse. I miss the days when mice came with additional weights. Such a cool little feature. Anyways, the plastic on it feels good, but I'm sure some of you will get more of a cheap plastic feel to it. Nonetheless, there's a bit of texture to it, which helps with your grip. There's matte and glossy, but surprisingly, I haven't noticed much fingerprint residue on it. The mouse is also very ergonomic in design with thumb rests on both sides to help keep your fingers from touching the surface. But as someone with big hands, I really had to adjust my grip around to find a comfortable way to use it. And I'm sure a few of you out there will actually just flat out dislike the size because it's fairly small. The left and right mouse buttons are made of one single piece of plastic that goes all the way to the back. Same as with a lot of their other mice. 
I've had no issue with the left and right clicks. They're very accurate each and every time, and I do like this curvature to them in the front, which helps your fingers rest on top of that switch. If you've seen my other reviews, you'll know that I love Razer's scroll wheels. This is a basic version of the ones you'll find on their higher end mice, but still works great. It has three functions, middle click, scroll up, and down. When scrolling, you can feel every click. The rubber has these treads on it, which grip to your finger, making it easy to use, and it takes just the right amount of pressure for that middle click so it doesn't go off accidentally. Now on the side, we have our front and back buttons, but you'll notice on the other side, we also have front and back buttons, which means this is an ambidextrous mouse. Now, if you're right-handed, that's great because at least you have two additional buttons, right? But if you're a lefty, you're sort of left in the dark because the lapboard's mouse surface is on the right. Not sure what they were thinking there, but I wish they engineered this in a modular way, which would allow you to remove the mouse surface and possibly attach it to the opposite side, or maybe just use it separately, giving you an additional option. So this isn't lefty friendly, and I'm a bit surprised because Razer actually offers lefty versions of some of their devices. Anyways, working with the small surface provided by the lapboard, I'd suggest using mid to high sensitivity. It's pretty much the best way to play a first person shooter because if your sensitivity is too low, that means you'd have to drag and reposition the mouse over and over. I'm looking at you Counter-Strike players, me being one of them, which can be really annoying because it's, it's so small. But don't get me wrong, it is possible, so don't let me scare you off with that. Now, as for details, I couldn't find a lot of information on this mouse, only that it has a 3,500 DPI sensor, which I believe is the lowest that Razer has. Even the Orochi, which is a similar size, has 8,200. But at the end of the day, those numbers don't matter unless you feel a difference. And originally, I thought I'd feel a drop in performance, but I didn't. Maybe it's because of the size of the mouse or the surface I'm using, but uh, it, it felt just about the same as using my Naga Epic Chroma. Also, for those curious, you don't need to use the mouse on that surface. So if you're on a desk, you can simply fold the lapboard and use the mouse on a desk or any other mat you may have. When I first saw the turret, I thought the idea was interesting, but I was not that thrilled about it. Then I started using it, and all of that changed because of how versatile it is. This is an amazing peripheral, and if you weren't sold on it like I first was, let me give you a few ideas on how you can actually use this thing. Being that you have two modes of connections, Bluetooth and RF, that means you can easily move this device from room to room. What I did was set up Bluetooth on my main PC and then RF mode on my Steam Link. But you can of course just take the USB dongle with you wherever you go. So if I was playing a game and wanted to move to the living room, I could just take the turret, switch the slider to RF mode on my Steam Link, and continue playing. Since the turret is so light, you can just throw it in a bag, not literally, and take it to LAN parties or anywhere you'd like and always have a set of gaming peripherals with you on the go. My wife loves using this with her Windows Surface, so you can use it alongside a laptop as well. Or you can even plug it into any computer or device and use it there. It can also serve as an introduction to gaming peripherals. Say you're starting to get into PC gaming and you're curious about what's out there. Well, with the turret, you get a mouse and a keyboard in one. And that keyboard is also very similar to the Deathstalker in the sense that it's low profile and has very quiet keys. This next one is not always easy to pull off, but worth it if you're interested. And that is using the turret for local co-op games that are compatible with two keyboards and two mice inputs. For games that don't allow it, there is a workaround out there, but it's not easy nor guaranteed to work. If you're interested and want to try that out, I will put that in the description below. But now if you're asking what would I do that for, well think about a first person shooter where a mouse and keyboard is more efficient than a control stick. So that's why I mentioned that workaround. I was able to test it on one game, which is Trine 2, because it is compatible with two keyboards and two mice, and it worked really, really well. So we talked details, now let's talk pros and cons. Let's get started. So let's start with pros, battery life. Four months or 40, that's 40, 40 hours of intense use. This device has an awesome battery. You can use it, set it down, forget about it, and it'll still be good to go. And when you're charging it on that dock, it looks pretty stylish. It's also small and lightweight, so it's easy to handle and it won't take up a lot of space in your living room. Because of that light footprint, it fits in most bags as well, so you can take it with you on the go. The turret is also very versatile. With two modes of connection, you can move it around from place to place and take it with you to continue playing. 
All around, it's a full package with a gaming keyboard and mouse combo. Great place to start for those of you who are looking into gaming peripherals. Now let's move over to cons. Backlighting. There isn't any. For something that's meant to live in your living room, I'm surprised at the lack of lighting. Like I said, it's always dark when I play games in the living room, and I'm sure for some of you as well, which makes it difficult to find specific keys such as those function keys. Next up, it's ambidextrous. I like that word. I know that left-handed people are rare, but they still exist, and this device isn't meant for them. Reason I bring this up is because Razer has been awesome with lefties before. They've manufactured some lefty editions of their mice, and some of them are ambidextrous in design, such as the one that comes with the turret, and I'm talking about the mouse. Easy way to solve this in the future is to make the mouse surface detachable so you can use it on the left or right side and maybe even on its own. Speaking about that mouse surface, it's pretty small. You can still use it just fine, but during intense gameplay, you'll find yourself pushing the mouse off, which leads to you looking down for a, a fraction of a second just to reposition it, which can throw you off completely. Then again, I understand that if it was too big, you wouldn't really be able to call the turret portable. If I look this way, all you see is glare. So that wraps it up guys. The turret has an RSP of $159.99 and I'll provide a product page as well as store links in the description below. So what do you guys think? Does the turret solve the issue of playing PC games in the living room? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you for the next box. And yes, I know I'm holding this upside down. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video or have any questions, make sure to let us know in the comments below. Now, if you want to support the channel and help us out, feel free to click that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content. Of course, if you want to follow us and interact with us, you can do so on Twitter, Facebook, and a bunch of other sites, which I'll put down below. Thank you so much. My name is Sergio IM, and I'll see you guys for the next box.